in today's video, I'm going to share a funny story with you. And it has to do with this um, Spellbinders tool in one. So yesterday I was sitting here and going over the narrative, talking throughout my entire video, which is part one to this series. And I'm just sitting here with my microphone. See? This is my microphone right here. And so I'm just sitting here and kind of fumbling with my tool in one. And I was holding it a little bit too close to my hair. And my hair has gotten a little bit on the long side. Okay. So I'm just uh, fumbling with this, just kind of like playing with this, giving my hands something to do. And before I know it, I had somehow. <laughs> I had somehow ratted my hair with this. This was stuck. Look, I'm still pulling hairs from this. So yeah, and I tried the best I could to to try to like not damage my hair, but at the end I had to just snip. <laughs> So, uh, in case throughout the video you may see a hair pop out of here, just so you know, it's because uh, <laughs> I kind of got it stuck to my head. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, the behind the scenes, you get the nitty gritty and all. <laughs> Enjoy the video. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm ready to build the uh, binding system for my mini album. And what you see me do is first I start with the ends, okay? I leave a two inch gap and then I'm gonna do half inch, half inch, half inch, half inch, half inch, half inch. And that's basically to build three pages. Now the measurements of this paper that you see here is 12, by approximately seven and a quarter. And so, yeah, I'm just building a regular binding system, giving myself a half inch gap between pages. And like I said, I want to build just three pages because I don't want this big chunky um, um, spine. And so, yeah, that's what you see me do right here. So now that all the score marks are done, okay, you can see right there, I have a half an inch gap between the three pages. And now I'm ready to um, add some ink around the edges, just to like kind of like give it that, um, whatchamacallit, I'm holding it upside down, that um, uh, vintage look to my mini album. And I'm just basically going to ink around the edges and then what I'll be doing is I'm going to glue the mountains the peaks and valleys you know you have peaks and valleys I call them mountains okay <laughs> I'm gonna glue the peaks together and you can use some good quality double-sided tape for this part but I decided to use glue and so there pretty soon you are gonna see me apply the glue to this and to hold it together um, what I like to do is I like to add some uh, which we we'll call it paper clips, some binder clips to it, and just let it dry for a little bit. I was in no hurry to make this binding system, so. Um, but if if you don't want to have to wait for the glue to dry, by all means, just use your double sided tape. But like I said before, if you're going to use double sided tape, make sure that you use good quality double sided tape because the last thing that you want is for your uh scrapbook to fall apart on you because of a faulty uh, tape. So now it's time for me to adhere the binding system onto the spine and what you see me doing is I'm using the uh, score tape and I use plenty of it especially in uh, the area where that holds the pages themselves because you want to ensure that every single little square inch of your binding system, the, the part that holds the pages, is adhered to the spine because if you miss a spot, it's going to uh, it's going to eventually pop out, you know, because of the weight of your um, 
uh, pages. So you don't want to do that. Um, and there you see me applying more tape and uh, not only do I apply tape, but also I apply glue to my pages. I mean, to my binding system. So for my pages, I'm going to be using the heavyweight cardstock because uh, these are going to be shabby chic pages and they're going to be able to withstand some of that weight that, you know, as you embellish the pages get thicker. So since I have three pages, I'm going to cut six pieces of heavyweight cardstock to uh, five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. Since each one of these pages are going to be pocket pages, I decided to use my circle punch to uh, cut a semicircle at the middle of the page so that way it'll be easier for me to push in and pull out the, um, the photo mat that's going to go inside every single pocket page. So before I glue my pages to the binding system, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the designer paper to put right on top of the um, cardstock. And the measurements that I'm using for this paper is five by seven. And what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to use um, that circle punch to snip a semicircle at one end of this paper. And once that's done, I'm just going to apply some ink around the edges and then I will just glue this paper onto the cardstock. Okay, so now that I have all six pieces ready to go, I'm ready to add or to make the pages and build them upon my binding system. Now, I came up with this method several months ago, perhaps a year or so ago, when I figured out, because, you know, I was always having the darnest time trying to get my papers aligned right whenever I would put them in the binding system. You know how everybody does it. Uh, you add your double-sided tape or whatever, and then you kind of like, uh, kind of force it in there and hope for the best. Well, that just wasn't working out for me. So then I thought, you know what? If I make every single page a pocket page, and I honestly don't mind making every single page a pocket page, then I can, I might just as well glue first one side of the page, make sure that that one is nice and straight, and then take the other half of that page and glue it right on top of it thus making a pocket page. So that is what you're seeing me do now. And I tell you, I really, really like this method. And it, it makes adding the pages to your binding system a whole lot easier. You know, you can use any method that you wish, but hands down, this works for me each and every single time. Mm -hmm. 